Hello, my friends. I'm happy to see you again. And again, it's me, Dr. Nitro, from my 8-bomb custom guitar shop. I remind you one more time that from now on all videos are made in two languages, Russian and English. So by clicking the link here, you'll be redirected to the language suitable for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, press a bell to stay in the loop of new videos. And today I will show you how I wind a humbucker from the beginning to the end. Let's go! So, at first, I will say a bit about materials and parts that I use. Humbucker is made of 40 parts, and all of them in any way make a contribution to pickup's voice shaping. It's important to say that vintage pickup PAF or patent applied for transfers not only string sounding but also resonance of a guitar wood. That's why the whole system, wood, strings, pickup and wiring work together and shape the sound that we got used to hear at legendary recordings. One of the important parts of a pickup is bobbin. Vintage versions are made of butyrate acetate. This material was used to cast bobbins in the 50s. Modern bobbins are made of another material and often have another geometry, but this feature is of high importance for voicing. Width between holes in magnetic core is 49.2 mm or 15 16th inches. Most of modern humbuckers are 50 mm wide or even 53 mm. Bobbin geometry is changed correspondingly. Backplate is made of nickel silver. It is not magnetized and has long legs. Sometimes it's not convenient when someone tries to put vintage pickup into modern guitar with shallow miling for pickups. Steel magnetic cores and screws can be made of different metals, and this also impacts the sound. Even difference between brass or steel screws that are used to tie bobbins to backplate provide different pickup sounding. Traditionally, long and unpolished alnico magnets 2, 3, 4 or even 5, if it's a 61 model, are used for vintage pickups. These numbers mean different proportions of aluminium, nickel and cobalt alloys. The weakest of these magnets are A3 and A2, the strongest A8. Yep, they also exist. Here we can see how magnetic field strength differs. Here's A3, here's A2, that's A4 and that's A8. All of them impact the sound in different ways. And the most important part of a pickup is wire. There are plenty of choices of pickup wires. They all differ in thickness, enamel, tension options and even copper. As for more than 50 years metal technology grew significantly, modern metals have now absolutely different characteristics that they had 70 years ago. That's why some manufacturers of pickup parts use metals from old sheep graveyards. One can find needed alloys there. And now we'll use modern wire that is also good enough for awesome pickups. I learned from my personal experience and tried parts of most of the manufacturers and chose the most appropriate by quality, however, the price is often too high. But my perfectionism makes me pay money for the sake of experiments perfection. So, today we will not be making the exact clone of vintage PAF and just wind a pickup with its average characteristics and traditional elements. That's why now I will use a wire from a big manufacturer, Electrosol. It's a high-quality wire and I am satisfied with it. The only minus is that this wire brand that I need is made in California only. Usually plain enamel wire is used in PAF pickups. A color may vary a bit. More often for a single coil pickup a wire with hemi foam wire enamel is used. This enamel is harder and thicker. Many people use cheaper wire with polyurethane coating. It doesn't match PAF at all. It sounds cloudy and pick up legs of highs. All of these delicate material characteristics together form a pickup sound. And one more important factor that I need to stress on is a wire tension while winding and a layout wire pattern on bobbin. Here lays the main magic. 
I can talk about it infinitely. But let's get down to business. At first, I cut all the sharp edges of the bobbins so that the wire while winding will not catch on something and break. Then I pick a small cut of a wire, it will be a starting point, both black on PAF. I carefully sold the winding wire. I carefully load bobbin into machine tool. Press at the center, turn on layout distributor and the winding begins. After 50 hundred winds, this machine tool stops automatically. Now I cut the wire and sold the finishing wire. The same thing is done to the second bobbin. Here we are, two bobbins are ready and we can start assembling a pickup. I carefully load magnetic cores into bobbin. A wire needs to be soldered to backplate. I sold the start of the bobbin to the ground. Now I can fix the bobbin through metal spacer. Let's check our magnet. I'll mark for myself north and south of it. Screws should be south. Then I fix the second bobbin with a maple insert. Now 
Now I can mount screws. They are harder than nickel silver, so they will screw themselves. But I need to be careful. Now I can solder wires. Two finish wires are soldered together and start of the second coil goes to hot wire. Everything is isolated and placed between bobbins. Then I fix it with paper tape. Vintage humbuckers were not put to box, so they remained microphone sense that transferred resonance of guitar wood. But to avoid this effect with a pickup cover screaming at high gain, I'll stick the cover to bobbin. Some people use a couple of drops of silicon sealant for this purpose, or one can put some wax into cover, heat it and it will fix without soaking coils. But more often I use such kind of double-sided tape. When you pull off a cover, it's easier to remove it without any marks. Grasp a pickup with special lathe and fix a cover. And final decoration decal patent applied for. So that's it, pickup is done. We just need to check a resistance. So, my friends, we've got an awesome pickup with a cover. I hope this information was useful for you again. Leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, press the bell to stay in the loop of new videos. And I say goodbye, see you soon. Rock and roll for all.